Did you know that 90% of the world's millionaires invest in real estate? Well, I'm Angel with the Academy Presents Real Estate Investing Rocks, and I'm here to help you if you want to go for your piece of that pie. I watched it because I was on those accountability calls with you, coaching you through that time, and you were not in a happy place, right? You, your job was ultimately leading to your decline, your de demise. It really was. The second you turned in that, or you know, you parted ways, or turned in the notice, or whatever, it was like that. One week later, guess what? You started. You, you got that idea for the summit. You started putting the summit together. Your energy, like like a light switch, changed a hundred percent. Literally, in a matter of a week, it was like not so good angel to all of a sudden now positive radiant like a like a weight had been lifted right yeah it was and, huge <laughs> yeah. and then we got you journaling i think right at that time and also doing a little bit of meditation so you you can speak firsthand on what these po the positive language did for you and one more fact that that was given on this podcast but i can maybe after this uh, find the link for it but um in these studies that they found that 83 percent of illness illness was exacerbated by negative thoughts so the people that kept saying, I'm, 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 oh, I feel so sick, I feel so terrible, or this cancer is going to kill me, I'm never going to get over this, they exacerbated those effects or their, their illness by 83%. Okay. Now, does that mean that if I, t I have the, uh, an illness that I talk positively about myself and, and put love in, and positive healing vibes around whatever may be going, that you're 83% more likely to to reverse that. I don't know. They didn't give me that statistic. They were talking more about the, what the power of negative thoughts have. So reverting back to the positivity, like I said, look, it, it, is, a, it is a practice. Okay. It is something you've got to be aware of too. And I want to give you guys a little tool. It's called the choose again method that I found from Gabrielle Bernstein. And when you're having negative, negative thoughts or, or doubting yourself or, um, going down that, that rabbit hole of negativity, the first step in this practice, and again, you're not going to get it right the first time, and it's not going to, you're not going to get in the habit of ever, every single time, but you got to create that awareness is you have that negative thought come into your mind, right? And you, oh crap, you found that you, you are, or you noticed the, the negative thought. Okay. The first step is, this is recognizing the negative thought. Okay. I'm having this negative thought. I, I'm talking, uh, I feel like crap today. Okay. Wait, I noticed that I just said that about myself. Okay. So the first thing is awareness, noticing it. The second thing is, is forgiving. She says, forgiving that thought. And I like to just say, this is not my thought. I do not think th that I feel crappy today. Okay. This is a temporary thought. Third step is to release that thought. I'm letting that go right now. Those are not really my words. Okay. I, this is not how um, I believe about myself. And the fourth step to that is to choose again. I choose to feel good about myself in this moment. And where, where this came up for me the most powerfully was, was, um, was months ago, and it actually came about a financial situation. I would, I would stress about money, and um, I really put this to practice when I, I, I would notice I'm stressing about finances. It was like, wait, time out, Mike. Those, those, this is a temporary situation. Money is, is energy. It comes and goes, okay? These are not how I feel about money, and these are not really my thoughts about money. This was just a, a temporary thought. I'm letting this go because this is not how I truly believe. I'm choosing to think again and understand that abundance is coming my way. And guess what? It's slowly, 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 slowly. Start. Well, no, I shouldn't say slowly. It, it started happening slowly and then picked up more and more and more and more. So I also believe in celebrating little wins, little victories, right? Because, oh yes, yeah, the law of attraction really works. Yeah. So the more that you celebrate little victories and, and little wins, the more that those start compounding and creating momentum that, that in turn creates bigger wins. Okay. Absolutely. Going back into the positivity thing, like whoever just wrote that, that the law of attraction really does work. Um, and, and from the statistic that it shows, when you say something, okay, it's great to have the thoughts. Those are, are, those are awesome, but you need to vocalize those. You need to verbalize those to become, because they come, become 10 times more powerful when you speak them. Now, let's talk about the law of attraction, right? If you put out, like I said, if you put out positivity, if you put out gratitude, if you put out love, if you put out uplifting, encouraging vibes to the universe, guess what the universe is saying? Hey, Mike, I'm going to give those back to you. Hey, so and so, I'm going to give those back to you because that's what you are, you are speaking this truth into the world. I'm going to manifest that into you, right? And I'm going to use you as an example here, right? For months, we would get on those calls, right? And you'd tell me of how cra the, the crappy things that were going on in your job and how much you didn't like a certain person in that job and, and the effects that that was having, right? And then what kept happening? 
then you were, you were having other people come in to watch you more and more frequently, right? And you were, you were having to meet with this person more and more frequently. So you were manifesting these negative things that you did not, uh, maybe you, didn't, you weren't aware that you were actually doing it, but it was all coming from what you were saying, right? Or am I completely BSing? No, I mean, you're, I hadn't thought about it like that, but I mean, just like success begets success. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was speaking into being the things that I didn't want to happen. Exactly, yep. Yep. Um, and in this podcast that I just, just listened to, they give a, an example of, of a baseball player that was in the World Series. I'm not much for baseball. But in the World Series, the, this team basically had it in the back. There was like one, one batter left or something, and he hit a ground ball to first base, and the, this like all-star first baseman, like almost Hall of, apparently almost Hall of Famer, missed the ball. And it went through his legs, and what happened is it allowed another runner to come in, score, and they ended up losing the, the World Series. All on that. And it wasn't known, and it says this in the interview, it wasn't known, but um, a few weeks prior to this or something, that, that first baseman was in an interview for, with a newspaper or something, and he goes, you know, it's not that I'm, I am, af what did he say? It's not that I'm afraid of not winning, it's that I'm afraid of not catching the game-winning ball mm -hmm. and, and losing because I did not catch this ball. So guess what he, pr he, he primed his sub subconscious mind to believe? Is that he is not going to catch that ball. What did, what manifested a few weeks later? The the it may have been the very last the batter or very last pitch of the game or something like that. He subconsciously manifested that weeks ago to not catch that ball. So it's like again this choose again method. When you start having those thoughts, and you're going to have these thoughts all of the time. So again, it's 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 practice and awareness. But when you start thinking those thoughts of let's give this situation of oh I'm, I'm afraid to not catch that game winning ball. Timeout. Let's choose again. Those are not my thoughts, right? I, I, I thought that was a temporary thought. I do not believe that thought. I'm sorry for that. I choose to think again. I am, how awesome is it going to be to catch that game winning ball, right? Not because, and this also, oh, this goes into language too. You got to be very, very careful of how you speak to yourself or about things, right? Because it's like, if I were to say, okay, I, um, and this is an example, don't, um, don't forget your keys today. Or don't forget your credit card today. What did you just say? You, you prime that mind, you, you put that word forget, okay? So I like to say things like, I will remember to grab my keys. I will regret, remember to grab my wallet, something like that. See the difference between that? Let's reiterate. I forgot, I'm, I'm, I don't forget your keys today. You prime forgot in, in the subconscious mind. If you say, I, I'll remember my keys today. Now you're, you're, you're telling your mind, hey, I got to remember to grab the keys. I will grab the keys. So that's just one one example of the power of your language, right? And um, what you said, what you speak out, you will get back. So what do you want in life? Let's make this also, let's get, let's get people clear. You got to speak exactly what you want. Okay. For, for you guys, it's, it's, I, I will sell, I'll, I'll sell more houses this year than last year. That's not powerful enough. If you sold 50 houses last year, you need to, I, I will sell 75 houses this year. Or let's use this, I will invest a total of $5 million in properties this year or break it down quarterly, something like that. Now you've spoken it, right? You're, you're manifesting that truth, but it's also giving you a target, right? So I want to give an example of when we moved to Hawaii, right? I, and it was all Angelica's doing, I was saying, I just want to have a nice house by the beach. That's going to be awesome, right? Well, Angelica was crystal clear on what she wanted. I want a house by the beach, a nice, modern, updated house by the beach with granite countertops, hardwood floors, and a cottage feel. If I could panoram to show you what is in, my, in, my, in our house right now and exactly how close I am to the beach, my generic manifestation was, was very generic. Okay, Angelica wanted a cottage-style house with an open-air design, modern, new, nice, close to the beach with granite countertops. Everything that I just listed off is all, it was all around me right now. And it didn't just happen once. She didn't write it one time. She manifested this every single day, writing this down in her journal. So for, for, for this audience, if, if, if it's, and I'm going to use this, I'm going to invest $5 million in total property throughout the year, then you need to write that down every day and take it a step further is read what you wrote. Vocalize that because as we've, we've noted, it's 10 times more powerful if you put, um, uh, if you vocalize it. Gratitude and positivity, right? Like I said, now I'll say this again. It's not that this just happens overnight and Mike, you live in a fantasy land because guys, I'm human too. I get distracted lots of times, okay? There's some mornings when I get in here, I'm like, what am I really grateful for? Nothing, yesterday was just kind of a blah day and it's like, time out. 
that's when I write down, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for the coffee, I'm thankful for the electricity, I'm thankful for the clean water, little, little things, okay? Again, with the, with the, the positivity and the acronym T tier, <laughs> it doesn't happen overnight, it, and it, it, it takes a hell of a lot of practice and awareness, okay? So I invite the listeners now and, and, and today, when you, today, let's start today or right now, when you start having a negative thought come in, let's practice and implement the, the think again method or choose again method, okay? So recognize that thought. Oh, I'm having, I'm having a, a bad thought, a fearful thought, a negative thought. Forgive that thought. That is not my thought, okay? This is just a temporary thought and then move to a, a, a new direction of, I am going to think this way instead. Well, okay. I've kind of got an example of that. Um, we had been, Jason and I had been in an, in an accident and the car was being repaired by this guy here in town. Well, he called me and said, did you get your insurance money? Y'all need to come and pay for the vehicle. And I'm like, what insurance money? He's like, what do you mean? Like, I don't know that we got a payment. And so then he got real defensive and he gets on the phone with Jason. He says, you need to bring all the money that you owe me in cash. And Jason is seriously upset, goes to the bank. He gets all the money. We've got the money <laughs> and we're driving to the place to go look at our vehicle. And Jason's upset. I'm upset. And then I'm like, wait a second. Somewhere along the way, there was a disconnect and somebody is confused about what the story is. And so I'm kind of backing it up. I've got, I'm calling our insurance agency. Um, I've got our insurance agent on the phone. We walk into the office and we just have a conversation about what's going on and it was like when we got done there um the guy that owned the shop like hugged my husband he was like we need to have lunch sometime clearly this is before covid <laughs> but we get in the car and my husband's like how did you do that how did you turn that around and it was doing basically this choose again method of where i said wait a second what's going on here you know i i, I didn't want to be upset anymore i wanted to fix the problem and so I wanted to look at it differently. So I think that's very similar to this method that you're talking about. Yeah, and, and it can be applied to business situations, health situations, relationship situations, any situation. It really, it's, it's really multifaceted. Um, but again, I can't stress enough, it doesn't happen overnight. You do have to practice, practice, practice. And more importantly, I think it's you need to practice being aware of the situation. Because it's really not that hard. It takes you max 20 or 30 seconds to do, to go through this little exercise, but it's actually being aware and catching when those negative thoughts come in. Right. So gratitude, positivity, all great things, but how do these actually bring in, in self-confidence? Right. And it comes in, I'm, I'm going to keep reverting back to language because at the end of the day, it really does come down to language. Now, self-confidence is, is brought on by many ways, but I think one of the strongest ways to bring more self-confidence is self-talk. How do you speak to yourself? Okay. Are you speaking negatively to yourself? Because as we've already stated, when you speak yourself, uh, speak it, it becomes 10 times more, more um, powerful. When you speak negative thoughts, they become four to seven times more powerful, and which, which means you're 40 to 70% more likely to manifest those things. I'm, I, I, I'm ugly. I'm, I'm overweight. I'm unhealthy. I, I can't sell a house to save my soul, whatever, whatever it may be. Now you're just telling the universe that's how you, how you feel and that's what you want. Okay. Self-confidence is also brought on by the way you look, right? I'm not, I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but our human nature is to, to when we meet somebody, we, we within milliseconds, um, a visual appearance will show, do, can I trust this person? Do I need to be weary of this person? Okay. And it is very true. When you look good, you feel good. Okay. When you feel good, guess what? You show up more powerfully. You give this energy a new vibration that you don't, didn't have when you don't feel good about yourself. Okay. Now, again, I'm not saying you need to be 10% body fat and look like a fitness model. That's not at all what I'm saying. But your body, especially if in the professional world, your body is a business card. Again, I'm not saying it's right or wrong. It is just human nature to instantly look at somebody and, and judge them. And it's, 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 again, it's a protective mechanism. Do I need to be weary of this person or can I trust this person? It's a primitive instinct. Okay. So, Talk about yourself positively. Talk about yourself highly, okay? Hold, and then hold yourself to higher standards. You got to follow through with, with high level actions, but taking control of your health, okay, is also going to eventually lead to you looking good, which then makes you feel better about yourself. I would just like to say too, that even if you, I mean, if you're looking at someone that's thin, but they're not, they're not taking care of themselves, like they're shaggy looking, they just not like in a stylish way, <laughs> but like they just look unkept. And then you have somebody that's maybe not as fit, 
but they look very well kept, you're going to feel stronger connection to the person that is well kept versus the person that is not as well kept. Yeah, and let's expand on that. It doesn't always mean that, that oh, the overweight person is, is a slob. No, no, no. You don't have to be a fitness model to look professional and to, to, to look well. I would way rather work with somebody who may be a little overweight, but is well put together than the slim guy that shows up with shaggy hair, un- unkept beard, shirt half untucked, messy car, things like that. Because how you do one thing, how you show up in one area of your life is how you show up in all areas of your life. Okay. If you show up well put together, well presented, guarantee your house is probably well, well put together. Your bed is probably made in the morning. Your car is probably clean. Now, again, you, I'm, I'm not, we're not getting into all the, you may have kids and there's kid toys around or something like that. We're not talking about that. Self-confidence also, and I, I kind of touch on this also by holding yourself to a higher standard, right? And it, it goes simple like that. Do you get up and wait and make the bed in the morning, right? Do you, oh, there, there's an, um, a story I heard once. It, it talks about by holding yourself to a higher standard, how you do one thing is how you do all things, right? Is if you, you get out, right? You wash your car, you wax your car, you spend two hours doing this. You put everything away. You put all that stuff away. You go back out and the sun's hitting just right. And there's a big spot in the middle of the hood that you missed. Do you just say, ah, oh, that, that's okay. That's good enough. It's fine. Or do you drag all that stuff back out? Do you rewash that area? Do you rewax that area? Because it's not right. It's not perfect right? Do you, do you have that? Do you set that bar high for yourself or do you allow yourself to just get by with it's good enough? I don't know. Those are questions to ask yourself, right? So showing up powerfully for yourself by holding yourself to a higher standard stems from the self-talk and taking control of your health, okay? For me, and we're going to go back to, to teenage years, I always said that I wasn't like that I wasn't unconscious about my body, right? That I didn't, I wasn't self-conscious about it. But the truth be told, I was. And it wasn't, it wasn't from my back, my, my back or anything. It was, I was self-conscious because I didn't look like the bodybuilders that I thought I was going to look like in the magazine, right? So what that ultimately did in certain times is I, I as a teenager, I, I didn't, I was, I didn't have the self-confidence to, to go chase, I didn't, shouldn't say date, but to date girls. I never, I only had, I had one, I had two girlfriends growing up and uh, one was like 16, one was at 21 and then now I'm Angelica, but that, that stemmed a lot of uh, lack of self-confidence because I had this per- twisted perception that I needed to look like the bodybuilders or otherwise girls wouldn't like, me, right? And that's not, that's also not healthy. So what I'm trying to say here is, is that you don't, you, your, your self image does play a big role in how you feel, both positive and negative. So where am I going with all this self-confidence? It, again, isn't something that you pick up overnight, right? It is not, but it is implementing small strategies every single day over and over and over again until you finally kind of have your breakthrough moment, so to speak. And it, and it may or may not be a light switch moment. It may be something that you kind of slowly emerge out of, out of that shell on. And it, it's different for everybody. Some people start developing that within a couple months. Some people, it takes years. So again, it, it's... It's how much work are you gonna are you willing to put into it? 